First, I'm going to paint this beautiful dahlia on silk, and then I'll share my thoughts on the background for it. First off, I need to wet the dahlia with water, but this time I can't do it with a big brush at a time, because my resist is not completely dry, so I have to wet each petal separately. And here you can see how I hit the resist with the brush, and such marks were left. So never repeat my mistakes, and wait until the resisting is completely dry. And now, after I wet the flower, I remove the excess water with a paper towel, because we need evenly wet silk surface. The resist that hasn't dried even stuck to the paper, you see? I will only need three colors for painting today. Pretty cool yellow, purple and ultramarine. And I wanted to slightly outline the yellow areas on the flower. They don't play a big role, but they do exist in the dahlia. And with ultramarine I'll cover the shadow part of the flower. And with a very light purple, it's almost pink here, I'll paint the illuminated part. I remember that I promised to show a simplified version of painting the flower, using only three tones of the same color, light, medium and dark, and such video will definitely appear on my channel, but a bit later. Now I'm going in on the yellow petals. And overlaying the purple color on them unites them with the ones that are just purple. And also gives the yellow a warmer shade, even beige. And here's another option to get a beige color. Mix yellow with the purple. Now, as you can see, I'm adding purple to the shadow part of the flower. And this is a medium tone of purple, a bit darker hue of purple than on the lighted part. And this purple, firstly, gives the main color to our dahlia, and secondly, unites the lit part of the flower with the shadow one. At this stage, it just looks like a shadow at the base of the petal. And in fact, I could have left the flower like that. It already looks convincing and not boring. But with a drier brush, I'm going to add some very little detail. This dahlia doesn't have all the tips of the petals light, as flowers usually do. But because of the volume and thickness of the petals themselves, there are such differences. This unevenness of each single petal surface gives such fine play of light and shadow, and some petals have even a slight shadow at the very edge of the tips. Uh, I hope it makes sense. Now it's time for more pronounced shadows, and I would like more clarification. For example, all of the lower petals are entirely dark, and I'm taking my time and gradually building up the darkness of the color. Look, as the shadow gets darker underneath these petals, they pop out more into the foreground and gain more fullness. But each petal has a different distribution of light and shadow on it, and I try to more or less follow that. I wanted to add yellow-green color, but it didn't satisfy me. It turned out too green and too pronounced, and I wipe it off with a paper towel. This trick doesn't always work, but it worked well in this case. And here's the same thing from a different angle. But once I made the yellow warmer, it looks much better that way. Mm, 
Now I'll add a little bit of grayish shadows on the lead petals. I don't want to convey all the nuances of this subtle play of light and shadow in this video. That's a topic for another video. Uh, in the meantime, I'm painting this dahlia rather loosely and with pure ultramarine I'll paint the darkest accents. And that way the dahlia becomes even more vibrant and three-dimensional. I dry the brush against the paper and with an almost dry brush I continue to apply the deepest shadows. I darken these little petals a bit, which are also mostly in shadow. And I'm going to go over the darker straw one more time. See, on our dahlia one side is light and one side is dark. And this will come in useful when I talk about the background. For now, I'm just going to notice that. I, <laughs> I got a little carried away with the detailing, as usual, and missed the color. And I wet the petal liberally with water first, and then remove it with a paper towel. One of the upcoming videos I want to dedicate to the leaves, their outlines and how they bend, so I wasn't going to draw them today. But about the background, there is a lot of options here. You can go neutral gray, it's a win-win, you can go more colorful, but remember I said that one side of the flower is light and the other is dark. And to make the image more expressive and dynamic, you want to make the background darker opposite the light part of the dahlia and against the dark part, on the contrary, lighter. And then the background will interact with our flower and play along with it. I hope you found this video useful and maybe interesting and I wish you good luck in your silk painting. And I'll see you.